Time for an updated Stephen King list. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach with Zach's Books and today I've got my updated top 10 Stephen King books I have read to date. I'm not going to say of all time because a lot of you guys don't like when I say of all time when I haven't read all of them. Ooh. The last one we did was back for October, which was near the end of October. I've read a bunch more since then. I have also reread some since then. We are going to put a graphic somewhere on here of the top 10 from back then. Pause if you want. I don't know how long we're going to have it on the screen, but it should be around somewhere or was there a second ago. So moving on to present day, I've got an updated top 10. I don't think any of them are in the same spot. I think every single one in my top 10 has been rearranged and or moved out. So it's very exciting times. I again still have to finish all of his books. I still have more to go. Don't know when that will happen. Obviously things have been hectic and life is crazy. We will post these top 10 down below or well we will link these top 10 down below if any of them intrigue you. Again down below is all the stuff we have down there. Bookstagram, um, Danielle's channel, um, there is still a podcast that you can listen to. And otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the books. Alright, in 10th place is now Needful Things. So, if you guys looked at the graphic, this means yes, Dreamcatcher is no longer in my top 10. Very sad and depressing. Still a 5 star book, it'd probably be 11 or 12. So, in 10th place is Needful Things. Obviously by Stephen King. This book is, all these are five stars by the way. None of these are less than five. So I'm not even going to bother saying star ratings. But if you want to look at Goodreads, feel free, whatever. This book was very good in terms of, one of the biggest things I always found to be a problem with me when I read King when he wrote like ginormous books about entire like civilizations. It was hard to kind of follow people from point A to point B, which I'll talk about in the next book too. For some reason, with Under the Dome, it kind of worked, but not enough. Needful Things, it worked like immediately, it was perfect. I was able to figure out like who I was following, what was going on. Uh, basically, this book is about a guy who comes to this town, the town of Castle Rock. This is supposedly the last Castle Rock story, but it was not. His name is Leland Gaunt, and what he is is he opens up a shop called Needful Things. And you pay two ways. You pay with whatever money you have in your pocket, and then you have to do a deed. What it pretty much is is like a joke. It's a prank. With this book, the pranks escalate, like, horrifically. We're following, I don't remember what his name is, Alan Pangborn. That is the uh, main person we were following. Basically, he's not fooled by Gaunt, and everyone else in the town seems to be, because, you know, you see something that you want, like this woman has got Elvis glasses and like all of a sudden she like like sees Elvis and like is like makes love to Elvis and everything. I will say there's a scene in this that's not in the mini or like the movie that they made, the movie for TV or whatever. It involves a little kid about a Mickey Mantle signed baseball card. It's pretty depressing and kind of on the sad end. It's worse than what happens in the movie. If you saw the movie, it's not as uplifting. It's actually pretty sad that part, but besides that, I really enjoyed the book. I thought the ending was kind of like whatever, but overall very phenomenal book. I gave it five stars and there you have it. Number 10, Needful Things. All right, in ninth place is a book that when I first read King was in the top 10. It drastically kept dropping and dropping and dropping until I finally realized I needed to give it another read. So this is one of my rereads. And it is, ooh, The Stand, the complete and uncut edition. Yes, hold the table still, because this is a big book. So this is Stephen King's longest work that he has ever written. It's like an individual book or novel. Obviously there's the Dark Tower series, but that's seven books, whatever. This book, I had first read it, the biggest problem I really had was I read it too soon. And I mentioned that in a couple of videos back way when I did read it. And it's a book that I had tackled too early on in my Stephen King career, I feel like. I listened to it kind of on the faster end. I was also doing stuff around the house a lot while I was listening to it, so I kind of got distracted. 
which is a very bad thing to do with this book unless you can like pay attention like on a dime because that's something I could not do. There's so many characters in this book. There's so many places in this book. It, this is possibly his biggest work. I mean, there's three editions of this book that are out there. There's the original cut edition from like 78. There's a paperback edition that got released in like the 80s that takes place at a different time. And then there's this one. And this is a mammoth of a book. Pretty much what happens in this book is it's in three parts. There's Captain Trips on the border, and I think the last part's called The Stand. There's three parts of it. It's a really, really solid story. So what also helped with me is I watched the TV miniseries from the 90s, and I was able to put names to faces. That's something that I always need, and I know people usually are like, oh, you don't have imagination. It's not that, it's just when I have 85 people I need to try and keep track of, just like I mentioned in Needful Things, it's a little hard to kind of keep track of them and figure out what's going on. So watching the miniseries, that kind of triggered me to be like, okay, let me reread it and see what happens. I reread it, it's in my top 10. It is a magnificent book. Uh, between nine and eight, which is coming up next, it was kind of a toss up, honestly. I'm gonna try and keep this explanation brief because this is going to be in a video in a recent reads, along with one of the other books that's in my top 10, and you'll see that in a few but I'm gonna try and keep this one brief if you want check out that video we'll have it up here if it's already posted if it's not then it'll be coming out within the next few days probably don't know what order we're doing these and we're filming a couple but basically this is about a disease called Captain Trips they end up calling it it spreads through basically one guy who leaves this facility where they're doing testing everyone in the facility dies this guy escapes with his family and he just spreads it throughout America. The entire United States just gets destroyed with this disease. It's got like a 90% kill rate or something like that. Like, it's terrible. A group of survivors which spread from, like, New York to Boulder to can't like, all over America all have dreams of this woman named Mother Abigail. And they, like, they all go and see her. Meanwhile, there's other dreams people have called with a guy named uh, Randall Flagg, who Randall Flagg is probably the biggest protagonist in Stephen King books besides maybe The Man in Black. But if my lore is correct, which I could be wrong, so don't bash me, The Man in Black, I think, is also Randall Flagg. There's a lot of, like, connections between the two. I think they're the same person. I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, correct me and don't hate me. But this book is really good. I really enjoyed it the second time around. I wanted to put it higher, but I, these other books are just better to me. Like I said, the next one and this one were kind of a toss-up, but whatever. So, very good book. Five stars. If you want more information, like I said, wait for the recent reads or go watch the recent reads. So, ninth place, there you have The Stand. All right, in eighth place, we have got a book that actually was number five I think it was number five, according to the list we just had. I believe it was number five. The Dead Zone. So, it's dropped a few places. That doesn't mean the book is bad. It just means that the more I pondered it, and one of the books I reread kind of pushed it back. And the one of the books just completely just pushed it back because of where it fell. So, The Dead Zone is still a really phenomenal book. All ten of these are really good books. It Ranking Stephen King is like a hard thing for me to do. Like, I've been wanting to, like make a top like 40 book list for him and like once I get out of past 15 or 20 I just have no idea where to rank him. So The Dead Zone is a book about a man, I believe his name is Johnny Smith, who kind of has like this precognition thing and he gets it when he's younger, he falls and hits his head on some ice when he's ice skating and he kind of starts getting some things but nothing really happens. He's a bit older now, he's a teacher, or I think they're about to get, they're like going to get married, I think. Her name is Sarah, I don't remember her last name. He's driving home with, he's driving home after dropping her off, it's like a like crappy weather. Gets into an accident, goes into a coma, I think it lasts like three, four, five years or something like that, that's a long time. And what happens is, when he wakes up, he gets... 100% precognition. He touches somebody and he sees the future. More commonly, it's about like that person, like something that's gonna happen to that person. One of the biggest plots in this book, there's, there's tons of different things with this book. There's, he's trying to solve a murder at one point. 
He's trying to... The biggest one is this guy who's running for president or, like, senator, and he eventually becomes, or, like, with his precognition, he sees that if he becomes senator, he becomes president, he starts World War III. Greg Stilson, I think is his name. Something Stilson, I, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've read this. I still got a concussion while I've been gone, so... Some things might be a little tweaked with memory, so bear with me. But I think his name is Stilson something, but pretty much what ends up happening is he's got to, like, stop this from happening. And he goes, it's this whole journey. It's a really good book. I really, really liked it. Uh, it's one of the ones I do need to reread. Out of these ones in my top ten, the ones I still have to reread, there's one, two, three, I think four. Four of these I have not read twice. So, definitely something I need to readdress in the future, see if I can shake up the top ten again. But yeah, overall, really solid story. Five stars in, what is it now, eighth place? In eighth place is The Dead Zone. Alright, coming in in seventh place is Misery. So this one was in a, I think it was in like eighth or seventh or something like that. It was a little bit higher up, if I'm not mistaken, in the last list. Jumped up a spot or two. The more I kind of pondered it, I do think I like this better than The Dead Zone. Just because it's... I've got like Stephen King staring at me on the back of the book here, so sorry. I thought the over... So this book is about an author, uh, Paul Sheldon, who writes the Misery Chastain novels. And one day he gets a new car accident. He's got like the manuscript for the last book. And he basically kills her off in the book. That's like his game plan. Annie Wilkes, who's his number one fan, who also happens to be a nurse, finds him after his car accident, nurses him kind of back to health, doesn't really heal him that much, um, but she's basically holding him captive. He, like, she finds the manuscript, she reads it, she's pissed. Basically, it's a torture. It, this, it's more of like a thriller novel. It's a what do I want to say? It's like a torture thriller horror novel is what I could probably perceive this book as. It's one that I honestly think Danielle would possibly enjoy, but she's still working on reading a few more King books and she's enjoyed everyone she's read so far, so that's good. But yeah, this is definitely one that is terrifying and like nerve wracking. The only bits, so obviously all these are five stars, like I said, the only bits that keeps this from cracking the top six or five is the little interludes of the novel that he's writing for uh, Annie Wilkes. So Annie basically tells him, you need to rewrite Misery back to life. And so there, he's like, we get interludes of like the book he's writing while still in this book. The second time around when I read it, I didn't really pay too much attention to those sections because it didn't really matter to me. And that actually kind of made the book more entertaining. I know it's not often you hear somebody say, ignore this part of the book, but if you get to the little interludes, you can either skip them or just kind of ignore it. Just kind of have it in the background. Made that a whole lot better of an experience for me the second time around. But yes, Misery, very good book, very nerve-wracking, and uh, yeah, sits at number seven for me this time around. Misery, number seven. All right, so after a little malfunction, we just realized that Misery was number seven in the last video. And uh, yeah, so that didn't change. And I guess this one didn't either. In sixth place is Christine. This is, this was one of the ones I just reread. I think this book is severely underrated. I know I said that in the last video and a lot of people agree with me. Nobody really seems to talk about this book too much. I don't know if it's because of the change in narrative where it goes from like first to third or like first to third to first or whatever, but it's a very good book. To me, I would definitely put this as between two, like two friends, not like a group of people. This is probably one of his better written books of like friendship between two people. We're following Arnie Cunningham and Dennis something. I know his name is Dennis. I don't remember if they really say his last name too often. They probably do, but whatever. They're best friends in high school, and Arnie is this dorky kid, and Dennis is this really good jock dude. He's like a football player, and he's really good friends with Arnie. He, like, backs him up, because if nobody else will, he's just gonna die. 
It's basically like his thought process. Nobody's going to have his back. It's a really cool like friendship story that you get. And it turns tragic because Arnie sees this car. A 58 Plymouth Fury. It is colored red. That did not make them red. And it was something that like he, it caught his attention when they're driving by this guy's house. And he had to go and get it. And he, like bad things start happening when he gets the car. He starts changing into another person. It, it's it's a really tragic story. He falls in love with a girl, and eventually it like it, it it's honestly a sad story because you like at the beginning you're all for Arnie and like wanting him to like be a better person, and then like just tragedy strikes and it's terrible. Overall, a phenomenal story. If you can get past the first to third to first narrative, it didn't really affect me too much. It was whatever. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. There may be are parts in the second part where it's in the third person that maybe kind of drag a little bit, but overall, very great book, and I would highly recommend this one. So, in sixth place, again, Christine. All right. It is now time for the top five. We have gotten to this point, and if you want to, pause the video and guess what you think my top five is down below. I don't know, throwing that out there. If you want to, go ahead, otherwise we're gonna continue. In fifth place, a spot back is The Green Mile. This is a very, just like Christine, a severely underrated Stephen King story. Really sad story. It's not anything like King really writes. Well, he's perceived as this big horror guy, but he just writes books and whatever. If you if you watch interviews, he doesn't say he's a horror author. He's just an author. But this book is more like kind of fantasy-ish, but it's really solid. It's split into like six different parts. We're following a group of prison guards. I think it's cell block E or something like that. One day they get a prisoner, his name is John Coffey, really big black guy. He gets accused of murdering two little girls and pretty much is sentenced to death. Obviously this is back, I think in, I have no idea what time frame it is, but it's like way long ago. And pretty much what happens is we're following the story of the prison guards dealing with this guy two other people who are in the prison at the same time. You've got, I think, Wild Bill is one of them. He's kind of a butthole. There's another one who befriends a mouse, Mr. Jangles, and I cannot remember his name. Again, concussed. But otherwise, you're following all the prison guard. It, he's wrongfully accused. He has this really special gift. One day, Percy, one of my least favorite King characters, which I need to make that a video, steps on Mr. Jangles, and John Coffey basically's like, yo, give me the mouse and makes the mouse come back to life. It's a really special gift, and it's really, really sad at the end of this book. It's truly depressing, and I, there's not much else, more else I can really say about this. I do really want to reread this book, though, because it is, it's been a little while, but this is a very, very good book. Also kind of gruesome, so just keep that in mind. Also, Percy's an ass, I don't like him. But yeah, in fifth place, there you have the Green Mile. All right, fourth place, Pet Cemetery. I have a lot to say about this book. It is one of the scariest books I've ever read. It is one of the creepiest books I've ever read. And I would highly recommend, if you have a young child, to probably not read this book because it is very, very sad. With all that said, it is a really phenomenal book and I gave it five stars. This used to be number three on my top 10 King list, as you saw in the previous uh, one that we had. However, uh, yeah, I read another book and that pushed all of them back. Pretty much, this book is about a family, uh, the Creed family, they move into this new house, and I think he's a doctor, I believe he's a doctor. And what happens is there is the neighbor, Judd Crandall, one of my all-time favorite Stephen King characters, pretty much befriends the family, tells them about the pet cemetery, they go and see it, and basically it's just all these little pets, like, oh yeah, the road takes a bunch of animals and stuff like that, mainly cats, dogs, you know, whatever. And 
This book also has got one of my least favorite characters in it. But the mom in this book, I truly despise. I do not like her. And I'm going to end it there because I want to keep this video short, short and brief. Pretty much, the while Lewis is not liked by the in-laws that much, so I believe it's Thanksgiving, the wife and the little girl and the kid, Gage, the most adorable child of all time, Except for ours, ours is going to be cuter. Basically, they go and visit the in-laws. While they're away, the cat gets hit by a truck. Church, that's the tr that's the cat's name. Gets hit by a truck, and Judd's like, there's another place beyond the pet cemetery, and I'm going to show it to you. So they bury the cat up there. It comes back to life. But the ground is, the ground is sour, and so what comes back, what you bury up there doesn't come back the same thing. The story continues, the, you know, the little girls complain the cat smells like crap, whatever. They have a party one day, and something tragic happens to the family. If you read this book, you know all about it. And Lewis goes insane and does something he should not do. And again, I have a huge argument about this book. I'm not going to go into it, and I'm just going to stop it there. But I really, really like this book. I want to reread it a third time. It's just so good. Bam! There you have Pet Cemetery at number four. All right, so update. The Green Mile, the person I was thinking of who befriends the Mr. Jangles is Edward Delacroix. <sighs> Finally got that out. I knew somebody was going to say something, so I had to say something. Okay, so we are in top three territory now. Woo! Um, if you have not guessed what it is, I'm going to reveal it to you now, obviously, but otherwise, take a guess down below if you want. See if you're correct. In third place... We have got another behemoth of a book, It. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal story. It is ideally almost a perfect book, except for one thing. And I'm not going to go into it quite yet. Basically, this book is about seven friends who, or well, seven outcasts who become friends and basically defeat this creature known as It, Pennywise, Bob Gray, whatever, the Eater of Worlds, whatever you want to refer to Pennywise as. It is its main term. Basically, this creature, what it does is it hones in on your greatest fears, uses it against you, and it feeds off of your fear. And basically it kills you and it eats you. It does not have a true form that is perceivable to the human mind. Uh, so at the end of the book when they're doing a giant battle it turns into a spider because that's like the closest thing that like can be perceived by the human mentality of visually seeing what its true form is. So it, I mean this is a giant 1100 page book of just pure mastery and it is horrificness. It's a book that, as soon as you're done reading it, you want to reread it, but then you realize that it just took you like two weeks to read it, and then you don't want to read it, but at the same time you want to read it, if that makes any sense. That probably didn't, but if you know, you know. The book is really good. The characters are phenomenal, all seven of them. I'm not going to try and list them all off because I'm tired of trying to think of characters in massive books right now, but there's seven of them. They're all really great friends. Basically what ends up happening, after I've said that several times, they defeated his kids, and then it comes back, I think 20, 20 or 30 years later or something like that. I think it might be 27. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. I know it's between like 25 and 30. When they're older, and one of them stays in town, in Derry, Maine, to... He just stays there, and he like, he remembers everything, but everyone else who left and became successful doesn't remember what happened until they get back to Derry and just the feeling of being in Derry like jogs their memories they start remembering Pennywise that damn clown and whatever the reason it's not higher is because of a scene towards the end of the book it, I mention it every single time I talk about this book because it's the one scene in this book that literally just docks at a point it's still five stars but just doesn't make it better than the next two books it's, it, if you know, you know, it's, and I swear one of these days I do want to say what it is, but I know I just can't. You just have to read the end of the book to know what I'm referring to, or just read the book and you know what I'm referring to. Besides that, perfect book. 
Doesn't matter about how long it is. It's a phenomenal story. In third place, there you have it. All right. In second place, my second all, well, my second to date all time favorite Stephen King book is The Shining. This book is amazing. It is truly a masterpiece. It is well written. It, the characters are phenomenal. There's not much I can really say about this book that I have not already said about this book. If you've watched my channel for as long as I've been around, you know The Shining has generally always usually been my top favorite Stephen King book of all time until I read another one that took its place. It's just really phenomenal. We're following the the Torrance family as they become the winter caretakers of the Overlook Hotel. Jack more mainly, but he brings his family, Wendy, his wife, and Danny, their son. There they meet the rest, some of the staff. Dick Halloran is the only one that really matters. He also appears in It, and I also he's also in Doctor Sleep, which is the sequel to this book. They become the caretakers of the Overlook Hotel. It's mainly supposed to be Jack. This is very different than the Stanley Kubrick film which I can do a whole video on that, honestly, but I'm not going to here because I don't want to do that. And honestly, the TV miniseries in the 90s, I've kind of grown more fond of over the years, mainly because after reading the book, I mean, it's pretty much identical and almost spot on. So yeah, Jack Nicholson as Jack Torrance is still my Jack Torrance, but Stephen Weber does a really good job. So, credits to you, Steve. This book, so yeah, they become the winter caretakers. The problem with the hotel, as Dick explains to Danny, is every place has got bad, it's got a bad past. Danny's got what is called the shine, uh, which is another thing that Mother Abigail mentions in the stand. All of his books connect. There's a YouTuber I watch who connects all of them, and I'm, yeah, and so I might mention every now and again. Basically, the ability to communicate with people who also have the shine without actually opening your mouth, you can do things with your mind, you can see things that aren't really there, and the Overlook Hotel is basically a bad place for Danny to go. His imaginary friend, Tony, tells him not to go there. He doesn't really have a choice. So he goes, bad things happen at the hotel, and I absolutely love this book. Jack Nichols, or not Jack Nichols, Jack Torrance, it's always confusing because they have the same first name. Jack Torrance is probably my favorite all-time Stephen King character arguably top one with this next person but very phenomenal story love every time i have to read this book and i can't wait to read it a third time along with pet cemetery and it so in second place the shine all right if you have stuck through so far in this probably 20 30 minute video you are probably guessing what number one is or you're probably not guessing what number one is because you know that i've read this book a lot of people, honestly, I'm going to see if we can insert a clip in here, but back when I did my other top 10 in October, I mentioned that I did not think this book was going to crack my top 10 because I thought it was historical fiction. So I'll just up front say it, my number one favorite Stephen King book, and honestly book of all time, 11 63 Insert clip of me saying that I will probably not like this book because I don't like historical fiction. Silly, Zach, you were wrong. So, this book is a magnificent book. We're following a teacher named Jake Epping in current day, which back when he wrote this, I think it was 2011 or something like that. And what happens is he goes into this diner that he knows the guy you know pretty well. And in the diner, there is this broom closet where if you go into the broom closet, you transport into way back, I think they start in 1958, which is iconic. So you teleport back into 1958, and this is an, around, this is in Maine is where he lives, and I don't know the exact town where he's at, but ironically enough, he stumbles across Richie Tozier and Beverly Marsh, which are two of the seven people from It, back in 1958, when I did my reading vlog on this book check that out up here. I like got psyched out and I was like, oh my God, this book is so cool. Even though it's like a hundred pages in. And basically what happens is the guy who owns the diner basically tasks Jake with go back and stop the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And minor things change when he goes back. Cause he can go back, he goes back in time and he could spend 10 years there. He ages 
But when he comes back to the diner, it's been like five minutes. Because I know the guy in the diner tries doing it, but he comes back, he's really old all of a sudden, and... You know, he got, I think he got all the way to 1962, I think is what happened. Anyway, what he pretty much tells him is the typical thing when you go back to the past. Don't mess with anything, just do this, lay low, don't be an idiot. Here's all this money, go back and do stuff. He also gives him a book for sport betting so he can get more money. And he mentions, do not fall in love. Keep relationships at a minimum. So what does Jake do? He falls in love with this girl named Sadie Dunhill. I cried watching the TV, the Hulu TV series with this, with this book at the very end. I cried. I also got a little choked up at the end of the book when I read it. Uh, this is, it's such a good book that I really didn't expect it to be as good as it was because I went into it thinking, okay, historical fiction, but a lot of people like this book, so there's got to be something else. It's way more than historical fiction. It's a it's a masterpiece. It's a phenomenal book. It's really, really good. And ironically enough, the ending, which I mentioned, I think, in the other video, was actually written by Joe Hill. Uh, because Stephen King's original ending, Joe Hill read it and said, this is hot garbage. Nobody's going to like this. And basically said, you got to end it this way. You can't end this book in any other way. And that's what Stephen King did. And thank goodness he did, because the original ending sounded like crap. So, so many things happen in this book. You just, you have to live it. And I wish I could relive this book for the first time and relive the TV series for the first time, because it, they're both stupendous. They are really, really good. I actually really want to reread this now, so, yikes. But yeah, there you have it, number one. 112263. All right, so that was my very long and updated top 10 Stephen King list. Again, I still have got plenty I have to read. Still have some books I have to reread for a second time to make it fair. But these, I, I don't know if anything's going to break. I don't think anything's going to break the top three, top four. Um, I know I said that last time and then 1122 happened, but out of what I have left, I don't think so. But I could be surprised. Uh, make sure you let me know your top five or top ten Stephen King books down below in the comments. Otherwise, I don't have much else. Check out all the stuff that's down low. You got Danielle's channel. You got the bookstagrams. All that fun stuff. And, uh, yeah. If you guys like the video, awesome. Like the video. Make sure you subscribe. And uh, drop a comment. Like I said, give me your top ten or top five. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.